Welcome to Assassin's Creed Odyssey Wait, no Shh. Welcome to Immortals Phoenix Rising We begin with the story being told about our soon to be hero through a conversation between Zeus and Prometheus and the doom of the world before quickly waking up on the beach We get right to it and right away we shamefully see a mechanic that helped make Breath of the Wild famous I can't believe Nintendo copied Ubisoft's unique mechanic. When are they ever going to come up with something original for a change and stop stealing ideas from indie developers? Anyway, seems Phoenix must have hit his head because he starts a conversation with some statue. Afterwards, we head a little further down the path and find the sword of Phoenix's brother before spotting the brother himself, who has been turned to stone. Phoenix then swears to find a way to turn him back. Uh, I'm no doctor, but with legs and arms broken off like that, I don't think changing him back is going to be a good idea, Chief. It's then time for some action and for his first time he is able to put off some sick trick shot attacks with that sword and sends them into orbit. My boy must have been on some of that go-go juice if you know what I mean. Steroids. Then time to clean up this giant stone statue because what would a Ubisoft game be if it didn't have to sink a viewpoint? That's like, well I was going to make a comparison to boxing but I've forgotten the punchline. It's a good thing we've climbed up here though because how we've ever spotted that giant temple in the distance and conveniently had a MacGuffin fly right by us. Now it's time for the best part of a high climb, and that's the leap of faith, which does not happen gracefully. Now that I think about it, this game doesn't let me dress in the robes of Altair or Ezio, two of my favourite Greek characters. <sighs> Talk about a 2 out of 10 game. Never mind, you can dress as a Greek Mystios instead for money. Maybe this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We soon come along and see a small crack in the floor and decide to jump in, because why not? And that's where it ends apparently. The drag, but you really got me with that ending. Now let's settle up. Time for you to help me against Typhon. It's not over yet. Not by a long shot. Psych. We then get dropped into our very own firing shrine and make our way through to get a lot of rewards. A set of wings. An axe. Deadliest of hunters, swiftest of heroes, fallen at the hands of Typhon. And now you fall, little bastard. And some of Zeus's lightning. To Phoenix, it was too much for him to bear. Ah, uh, what's happening to me? Bye bye, mortal. And then, just like that, it stopped. No! The wings grounded the lightning. All this in the tutorial. Wow. With the wings on our back, it would be a shame to not try them out, so we go for this gap, but it seems the wings are missing feathers. What a shame. It also, for some reason, gives us a speed boost, and just in time for a little sprint. As a reward for such speed, we get to fist this giant black hole, and it must have felt better than it looked because we even got paid for it. Then without warning, we are put up against two of gaming's toughest enemies. It's a good thing we got all those upgrades or I'd be the one being served in a finger licking bucket. A little ways up the hill we spot a jab at a hut and notice that its belly is glowing. Possibly it's pregnant. That's two kills for the price of one. Score. Unfortunately, after slaying it, it turns out there were just braces in the stomach that grants the strength of Hercules. That's cool too, I guess. Standing on the edge of the cliff, we didn't see a familiar sight. That's like two easter eggs now. Anyway, using the new powers we obtained, we use it to smash a rock right off that stupid slut's face. I mean, slug. I know I'm taking a piss, but this game's combat, although simple, is actually a lot of fun and very satisfying. Well worth checking out. Once those guys are defeated, it's time for a small puzzle and back down for another shrine that gets us a bow. Talk about getting fully geared out. Finally, we catch up with that blonde haired girl, and as the tanks, they steal our bracers and run off into the temple. Remember that? The temple? The one we were meant to go before saving the damsels in distress? That one. After heading inside, it's another quick puzzle, and on to see the oracle, who seems a little. odd. Oh, wise oracle! How do I reverse the curse and turn everyone back from stone? Wow! 
That's a real... That's a real question. I don't know. It's a mystery. Well, then, how do I get my stolen bracers back? Ah, another mystery. Turns out the guy there is just some priest enjoying the incense as the oracle is turned to stone. As we leave, he gets possessed and a new quest is underway. Darwin! Father of your line, is not father of your kin. The big girl who stole from us overhears and tells us they want to help and to grab some wind in a jar and meet them on top of an observatory. So it's another shrine. What I also like drawing some of these loading screens is you can fly around and collect some gems with some little jokes from Zeus in the tip section. This game does a good job of having you exhale from your nose often. Once inside we are greeted by an ogre, with some back and forth from Zeus and Prometheus, we fight it. Normous, but Phoenix just no! So you want to dance, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's perfect! The adorable monster was ever so playful. Everything he had prayed for to take his mind off his worries. It was a gift from Olympus he would treasure forever. Deep within his vulnerable, yet ever expanding. Ah, fine, have it your way! And using some nice cheese, I beat him easily by smashing its face with rock. Then it's one more puzzle and another black hole to fist, but this time the money gets thrown out at our face. For some reason it makes me feel... dirty. Anyway, we make it to the top, and as a reward is a chest with some armor. Now we look like that unlikely hero to save the world. Once there, our new buddy repairs the wings, and just in time as we are introduced to the main villain. A demon octopus hand thing that looks like a volcano named Typhoon. We pop the jar with the power of friendship and a punch in the back. We temporarily banish him back. With some breathing room, the big girl explains they are actually the winged herald Hermes and tells us to meet them at the Hall of the Gods and vanishes. And with that, Hermes disappeared. Well, that's going to do it for now. If you enjoyed this and Phoenix's adventure, I'd appreciate a like. If not, I thank you for watching this long. I'll see you in the next one.